Well, greetings and salutations there, Pipe Pals. How are you doing there? Okay. Old, holy smoking pipe, Padre, coming back at you. That might be a little bit too far away there. I'm not using a mic, an extra audio mic, like I normally do. So I'm gonna sit up a little bit closer. So I'm here with again my Philippe Ravara. You know, I made in my last video. Uh, and I'm smoking some McBarron's plum cake. McBarron's plum cake. Hi, lads and lassies. And I'm out here and the uh, beautiful fall weather. Mm, absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, this weather is the weather I have been waiting for for the last <laughs> two months. And let me tell you, it is absolutely delicious. Now, there's a wee bit of a problem. Like my pipe. Because the wind is winding. Mm. So, now you will excuse me. I need to bring out the star of the show. <laughs> the star of the show. Here we go. Elsie. 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 Well, the star of the show didn't make an appearance. I think she went back inside and sleeping. Uh, but I got myself some coffee here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the this week's TSC challenge. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So we got McBaron's plum cake. I'm trying to compare it with the um, the other plum cake that I had. I love my wind chimes when they when they when they get going. They're awesome. They're awesome. Oh, this is glorious! Absolutely glorious! I absolutely love it. Well, it's sweet. There's no denying that. Um, it is a navy flake. I'll show you the, the golden uh, goodness here. Uh, interesting little statement on here. I'm gonna read it to you in a minute. Kind of thought it was interesting. Okay, here's the, uh, the golden goodness. Let's see if I can do this here. The golden goodness there, right there. Look at that. Look at that. High def, huh? Gotta love high def. Golden goodness. Okay. Hmm. It smells like a Cavendish, as, as it should. And uh, I thought it was interesting that the warning on this was slightly different. And it says that nicotine is uh, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an, is an addictive chemical. Addictive chemical. Now, what's interesting is a lot of these have been saying more like can cause cancer, uh, cancer causes, you know, can kill you, obviously. But this is the first 10 that I've seen that says that it talks about nicotine being a chemical that is addictive. And it's kind of a departure from, you know, smoking is evil and bad and it's gonna destroy you and the world and the planet and, you know, the universe. And I just thought that was kind of an interesting uh, a difference, you know, la difference. Hmm. So anyway, um, 
anyway, so I wanted to get on here and just do my my weekly TSC um, updates on my videos. So let's roll that tape. Pipe pals, how y'all doing? Old Holy Smoking Pipe Padre right here. I just finished my TSC 300 challenge, three mile run. I do an interval run. Basically it's an interval uh, run for a minute and a half, walk two minutes, and then sometimes it's just the reverse. Run two minutes and walk a minute and a half. But anyway, okay, last week's uh, time was 36, I think, 36.05, and this week's uh, time is, that's right, 34.17, so I took off almost two minutes, almost two minutes there. Now, again, some of you might be thinking, oh, okay, old Padre, he's, you know, come on, he's not, he's not really, he's, he's just lying, or he's doing some, some kind of shenanigans, because how can, I think I started off Week zero, like 44 minutes, maybe 42. But anyway, so I've either brought my run time down in the last three weeks, three weeks, either by eight or 10 minutes. But now I do have some help uh, in the fact that uh, the interval run is timed. And uh, so what I do is I don't walk the full minute and a half or two minutes. So I kind of, if you want to say I'm cheating, I guess maybe I'm cheating, but I, I run even during the walk. And actually I stack up a run, a walk, and a run cycle. Then I, then I do the, the basic cycle. When I get to the end of that at the mile and a half, I start all over again. And this time today, I, I uh, again, I did the run, walk. Actually, I didn't do a run, walk, run because I couldn't get it to start that way. But anyway, so talk to you more later. Got some McBaron's plum cake to share with you later. Bye. Okay, I'm back. So, okay, so um, this week was not as. Um, I mean, I didn't see. I, I didn't see all the improvements that I was kind of looking for. Kind of, well, maybe more hoping for. Uh, although, um, it looks like the weight is going down as of yesterday. After the run, I was like uh, 208. I think last week I was 211. My ultimate goal is to get under 200 again and stay there. Well, my real goal would be down to get about like a 165, 170. Um, possibly I might be able to do that if I stick with this and I plan on sticking with it. Hmm. But um, so this week, um, Let's see, um, I, the, the diet was pretty good. What I've been doing the last three weeks is kind of, um, I guess what, I, again, I've been in this ketogenic diet, like back in there and doing that, really feeling good. The, the thing is that I have, now when I say, uh, I'm talking about this, I guess I'm doing this by, by just kind of blind luck here. But I'm doing kind of a natural carb cycling. And what does that mean? Well, that means that on Sundays, uh, when I say I have carbs, I might have like a little bit of a, maybe a sweet potato or not, not rice. I'm not going to do that again, but, but things like a, um, butternut squash or maybe spaghetti squash or maybe a, a yam but very, very simple. Now, I've, I did this once before, and uh, I would have just one, just one serving, one serving. And so I really like the, the fall, winter uh, squashes. And again, they, they tend to be a little bit more like a tuber, so they're gonna be a little more packed with some carbs. But the rest of the week, I basically do, I, I'll do a green smoothie a couple of nights a week. Basically, I'll do 24 hour fasting, I've been doing that every day. And Sunday is kind of like my, <clears throat> when I say my my rest day, I don't use it now as, oh, I'm gonna go out and get a pizza, or I'm gonna go, you know, get some ice cream, or I'm gonna call my favorite Chinese fast food takeout. We don't do that anymore. But, um, but again, um, I have had a couple of uh, Sundays where I've had just basic you know, good home cooked meals and uh, still have the vegetables and some protein uh, and a little bit of potatoes or co not corn, but 
but but but again, something of a of a of a, of a tuber. I know it's a starch, but that's it. So the rest of the week, I'm just doing vegetables and protein, and of course, uh, some uh, some keto fat, like some high cream coffee or a little piece of butter. And uh, that really seems to kind of do some good things. I heard that a lot of times when you when you kind of deprive your body of a certain nutrient, even carbs, um, your body kind of thinks, uh oh, and it just gets really stingy with letting go of the fat. But if it's getting uh, some, you know, what you know, on a periodic basis, it kind of says, okay, this is what we're doing. I can still don't I don't want to like don't have to cling to every single you know calorie or fat molecule to hold on because we're starving we're not and we're not but anyway so I've, I've heard about people doing this carb cycling thing and they say it does if you can do it you got to do but you have to follow it you can't do carbs you know three or four days a week and then just do maybe two days or whatever you have to you have to you have to be really, really regimented about it and the thing with carbohydrates they're very addicting. I'm a very carb sensitive, addicted person. So if I want, if I get carbs, especially in the highly refined junk food type carbs, I mean, it's going in and in and in and in. So, but this is week three. And just, you know, just gonna, gonna go, through, go through the numbers um, real quick. Oh, have I run out of fuel? Nope. Mm. Okay, so the, the numbers, the run came down to my, two minutes. I know some of you might be thinking, oh, come on now, you're you're cheating. You're, you're doing something because that doesn't sound right. Well, again, I started off at 43 and <laughs> something, you know, four weeks ago. My week zero, so even though this is week three, I've done it four weeks now. Uh, yeah, my week zero was 43 minutes for a three-mile run. That's not that's not setting the world on fire. We know that. Um, and I brought it down, and and now uh, it's 40. It's 34. So almost that's a, almost nine minutes off of that original time, which is good. It's a pretty good. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because of my app that I use to run with. It's I do an interval run, although I have to say more and more I'm doing more running than walking now even <coughs> even in some of the walking periods I'm kind of I'm kind of doing a little bit of I wouldn't say cheating but I am kind of okay I don't need to walk this much I got my breath back I can I can I can do another two minutes I can do another 30 seconds you know whatever I prolong that and I kind of and then even in the walking phase I'm not I'm not leisurely walking I'm doing a, a high power walk so and I keep I keep doing that. I keep doing more and more and more and more and more and more. So now uh, the the pull-ups and the push-ups. I mean the pull-ups and the chin-ups. That's going to take some time to come back. Um, I stopped doing it for six months. I was doing uh, five full pull-ups every day, and I did that for like uh, almost a year. And where'd my little Gita slum go? It was here a minute ago. Oh, there it goes. Put a little draft hole in this. It's starting to, starting to get a little bit cakey there. Hopefully that'll help. Nope, yeah, it's not working yet. Oh, maybe that'll do it. Maybe that'll do her. Okay. Yep. Yeah, shoot. Somehow I got a little, I got a little hole in there. I mean, I got a. Okay, hopefully that'll work. Okay. Okay, there we go. A little bit better. So anyway, um, doing better. And one of the things that I like, I have to say, you just like it with anything else your body begins to respond. Now, it's, uh, it, takes, it just takes time. It just takes a lot of time uh, to, to, uh, to do that. And you have to be willing to go through some discomfort. And I know, personally, 
do I like doing this and hurting, you know, and aching and I'd rather call Grubhub and, you know, order some Chinese takeout and sit down and watch TV. That's what I want to do. But that's not good for me. It's not good for you either. <laughs> I mean, you can you can enjoy some things in moderation. And the qu the problem is that we talk about moderation and moderation is that's such a nebulous term. You know, and unfortunately, most of us really don't know how to do moderation. I know I don't, just gonna say. So, anyway, um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm, but I am, I get excited because, hmm, there we go. Whatever it was, it, I used my pipe cleaner and pushed it through. The, the exciting thing for me, being 60 years old, an old fart, um, is um, when you begin, when your body begins to start to re respond positively, and that's exciting. Um, here I am, I'm out, I'm, I'm out running, um, and you know, that's something I did in my 20s and 30s, and 40s. What I did in my 40s when I was in the Army I found treadmills to be wonderful because going out and running the old-fashioned way in combat boots and stuff was just tearing me up. But I, um, but I really got uh, in shape just running on a treadmill for about an hour a day, uh, an hour a day. So cardio will help take the weight off of me, which is a good thing, I guess. Some people it doesn't help, uh, but it does help me. And so the more cardio I guess I do, the better. which is why I'm kind of excited about really getting back into just basic, you know, running, even for an old guy, because it really does help. And my, my breathing gets better. <laughs> I know some people go, wait a minute, you're smoking a pipe and you're breathing it. I don't inhale and uh, never have, uh, never have a desire to. Mm. But it tastes good. Um, very, very kind of a, It's a, it's a Cavendish. Now I have to say that after my, my bout with pneumonia about two months ago or a month ago, my olfactory senses are kind of, because of some of the medicines that I take, it kind of, I hate to say it, it kind of seems like it deadens the part of that which, you know, it has to do with flavors and things. So, I mean, I can still taste food, but not with the same, uh, same kind of, uh, sensory perception that I think I did, you know, before the pneumonia. So it, eventually it does kind of come back, but but uh, there's a lot of congestion still in the mask there. So sense, sense of smell and sense of taste are not quite as acute as they, as they were a couple months ago. But again, I think uh, it comes back eventually. Um, so, um, it's a beautiful autumn day, uh, just absolutely gorgeous weather, um, and I'm really grateful, uh, really grateful for a, a nice, beautiful day, uh, grateful that I can still, you know, go out and do things that I probably hadn't done since I was, you know, in my, again, 20s and 30s. Again, I'm not going to, as like I said a couple weeks ago, it's not so much that I'm gonna go out and make world records, or I'm gonna just, you know, astound the world with my athletic prowess. I mean, that's not gonna, that's not reality. But I'm playing the game, I'm in the game. And that's the important thing. Because in, the, in life, it's, it's participation in life. It's not just sitting back and being a spectator all the time. There's nothing wrong with being a spectator from time to time. But, but really, it's like people playing softball. It's people going out for a, a, three, a, a, four K, a, 5K, a 5K run jog, you know. You know, our bodies are meant to be, they are in some sense a machine. They have to be, they have to be exercised. They have to, they just have to have that, you know. You know, a lot of times people think of, of, of abuse, you know, you abuse things, but neglect is also abusive, you know. 
You parked a brand new car in your garage for five years, guess what? When you finally come back to start it up, it ain't going to run. Or it'll probably run and blow up. <laughs> because all of the oils and all of the, there's nothing, it's all, it all, it, it basically dries out. <laughs> so bodies in motion are important things. That's all I'm going to say. But then when you're feeling good, you're not feeling like you're 70 years old when you're 45, you know? Uh, you're not going down a little power scooter chair, you know, you know, to the, to the store because you can't walk anymore. Uh, your doctor's telling you, oh, by the way, your diabetes is getting so bad, we might have to amputate some of your toes or a foot or part of your leg. That's that pretty, that scares the heck out of me. Uh, so, you know, again, one of the things that I think I talked about in videos past when, I was, when I've been going through this whole process is uh, recreational eating and when I'm not careful uh, I can get myself into that and I think all of us can you know where it just is so convenient it's so easy uh, to stop off at Mickey D's or Jack in the Box or Taco Bell or Chick-fil-A or call you know get a pizza you know all that stuff and it's it's, it's akin to me to, to alcoholism or drug addiction. I'm sorry, I know some of you might get really angry at that, but that's the truth. You know, I got somebody, oh, maybe a couple of weeks ago who kind of, you know, took me to task and, you know, said I was a bad example and, you know, I was, you know, talking to, I was trying to uh, encourage young people to smoke and as a priest I shouldn't be doing things like that. And, you know, they said, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're encouraging people, you're encouraging an addiction or something. Again, like this here, it says, you know, nicotine is a, is a, is a additive chemical, it's a, and it can be uh, an addictive, can be addictive chemical. Okay, well, there's no doubt about that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not arguing that. But um, a person who has dealt with real addiction in their life, I can tell you, honestly, that this is not uh, one of them, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I mean, if I was getting up every morning and having the first thing I had to do instead of checking my iPhone, now I might, I might be a Mac addict. I, I freely admit that, uh, an Apple addict. Uh, but, but if I was, you know, I had a couple friends who were just like that, and I, I never knew. I mean, my brother, today's his birthday. God bless him. Um, anyway, um, pipe smoking was just something that was kind of special. I mean, magical. I mean, when my brother would come home and, you know, later when he kind of settled in, you know, and after dinner, he would pull out a pipe and he would just puff on his pipe. And I just remember the, how wonderful it was smelling, just smelling the pipe tobacco in the pouch. Ooh, I just love that. And of course, this, the fragrance, the aroma of the pipe burning, it was just like, oh, I was like heaven on earth delicious stuff, wonderful stuff, magical stuff. That's why I like pipe smoking. It's not just, you know, that's addiction. This is not addiction. I mean, this is the first pipe I've had probably, well, since last week. And I've gone years without smoking. Now, some people might say, oh, you're just trying to justify your addiction. <laughs> well, like I said, I know what addiction is. I've had addictions to alcohol, I've had addictions to food, uh, clearly, and uh, struggled with them. But um, thanks be to God, I, I am I'm great to, grateful to say I, I'm sober today. I've been sober for a number of years, I'm very happy about that. Alcohol's not a part of my life. Um, I'm hoping to someday get way beyond the point where Mickey D's and Taco Bell and and uh, those kinds of things are just not part of my life anymore. I just don't even think about them. I don't desire them ever again. Um, and maybe, maybe someday. I mean, I, I actually went almost three years without a fast food fix until about uh, 19. You know, uh, just before I came up here to Chico, I gave myself permission to go have some Mickey D's and do the fast food. I didn't. I hadn't. I hadn't done it for three years. And not that I missed it that much, but I kind of wanted to say, well, what is it? Does it still taste the same? Yeah. Does it still have the same negative, deleterious effects on you? Yeah, <laughs> clearly. 
So I just recognize that I'm probably a bit happier and healthier when I avoid, you know, recreational eating. Now, again, there's a, probably a time and a place, but you've got to be super diligent. And But there are little wonderful little hacks in life that you can do to still enjoy some of those naughty things as far as you know like treats and refined carbohydrates but you have to you kind of have to have a strategy and again I don't want to go there now I'm not going to talk about it now because I'm still I still have a hard, hard time with that I probably for me the best thing to do is avoid it altogether and I'm, I'm really happy and fine and plus the food that I eat is is, is very nutritious and it's and it is delicious it's not it's not super duper, you know, exquisite. Well, fast food isn't exquisite. It's just a big collection of, can we dare say it, addictive chemicals. <laughs> Real addictive chemicals. For me, a Big Mac is worse than this. Seriously. Now, you might, some of you might say, well, no, smoking and tobacco are evil and bad and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, but I dare say a person who smokes a little bit of McBaron plum cake maybe once a month or once a week, if, if that's the average you do, is far less destructive to your health than eating Mickey D's at least once a day or two times a day or a whole bunch of other fast food in combination with that. Not to mention the processed food, the microwavable food, the stuff that comes in bags and little boxes that have wonderful preservative chemicals so when you eat it it doesn't decompose it doesn't your body can't as assimilate it because it can't break it down so anyway all I'm saying I'm not trying to glorify smoking I'm not trying to encourage especially young people to smoke never um, but it is a hobby this is the YouTube pipe channel and you know a lot of us have this common uh, appreciation uh, for you know this little art we call the gentle art of, of pipe smoking so it's not it's not you know some evil wicked you know abomination that you know some people may want to think it is um, one of the best YouTube pipe videos and I still hope he has it up there was Herminator's video about is smoking a sin one of the best videos I've ever seen in fact I'm probably gonna watch it again today if I can find it but it just nails it I just loved it and he's out there in his home in Deutschland and he's walking around and you know that's back when he had the hair and I think he's still bald I haven't checked on his YouTube in a while I need to do that but anyway so I um, hope you got something out thank you guys for being patient with me I'm not gonna drone on any longer I'm just gonna enjoy the beautiful autumnal day I love that that's one of my favorite words in the whole English language autumnal I hope you're having a wonderful autumnal day where you are thanks for watching we'll see you next week. Take care and light up your world and light up your pipe. And by the way, you know, I just put in a little plug for all of our YouTube pipe carvers out there. And there are a number of them. Um, again, Philippe Rivara, Joe Case, Scott. Oh, I forgot what your last last name, Scotty, but used to make some really interesting creations um, and creative pipes. I think his, he's a new guy out there. Um, but anyway, so um, support those guys too. They need to make a living, and you won't get. Oh, and Geo Pipes. That's that's one of them I bought, bought pipes from too. So support our pipe, our YouTube pipe carvers. You know, uh, especially if you don't have a briar patch or a tender box, you know, because they'll make something just for you, and that's very very special. Okay, later. <laughs>